Thank you. I'd like to thank all my colleagues for taking the time today. A special thank you to uh, County Executive Laura Curran and County Executive Steve Vallone. Uh, we work together on uh, many situations, and uh, there's no doubt that this is one of those situations where government working together, being totally coordinated, uh, works for everyone's benefit. Uh, let me make some opening comments, and then uh, you'll hear from the county executives. Uh, just on the uh, current status of the situation, we had 11 cases as of yesterday. Uh, with the testing we did last night, we have an additional additional 11, so we're at 22 cases. Uh, eight of those additional cases are connected to a gentleman we have in Westchester uh, County who lives in New Rochelle, an attorney who worked in Manhattan, lived in Westchester. Uh, and we have been following up on possible contacts that that attorney had. Uh, eight of the new cases are in connection with him. Uh, two people in New York City who are currently hospitalized and one uh, in Long Island in a hospital in Nassau County. Uh, that uh, individual had uh, underlying medical conditions, which is uh, one of the populations that is at greater risk uh, for this virus. Uh, and he has tested positive uh, and he is uh, under care in a hospital and his condition has been improving. On the numbers, uh, the number of people we find with the virus is going to continue to go up. By definition, since we are testing more people, you will see that number go up. The number cannot go down. It can only go up. Uh, and since many of these tests are being performed as a follow-up to people who have tested positive, their family, people they've been in contact with, uh, the likelihood of finding positives is even higher, right? These are not random samples that we're doing. We're most often testing people who were in contact with someone who already tested positive. Uh, what is the point of all the testing is to do the best you can in terms of containing the virus, right? It's imperfect by definition, but the more you can contain it, the more you can limit it, the more you can reduce the spread, the better. Uh, and that's why we're doing this on a daily basis. We're also increasing our testing capacity uh, because again, the more you can test, the better. I want to thank Northwell and Michael Dowling uh, and Dr. Koshansky and Stony Brook, who will be doing testing in concert with the state uh, and will be helping us not just on Long Island but in the metropolitan area. We're, uh, we're working with a number of uh, other laboratories to increase our testing capacity. The state can test at what's called Wadsworth Laboratory, uh, but Dr. Zucker, our health commissioner, has been working with the federal government. We now have approval to work with other labs also. So we'll be increasing that uh, testing capacity. The, uh, one of the points I'd like to stress today, you know, people, there's a level of anxiety and fear that is out there because of this virus and the constant press attention. Why, are, why do people get afraid? Uh, there's, there's always one of two reasons. You get afraid either because you think you are not getting the right information or you're confused by the information or because the information itself is frightening. The information itself, the facts here are not frightening. I think what's causing anxiety is that people are confused and they're getting conflicting messages. And if you listen to the radio or you watch these cable stations all day long, you see all these people spouting different theories and different opinions. Uh, the, the way I handle it with doctors in general, uh, I say to a doctor, and I love doctors. I love all doctors. My daughter, my sister is a doctor. But I say to doctors, before you give me your opinion, give me the facts, okay? And then give me your opinion. There are facts, and then there's an opinion that you draw from the facts, right? Uh, so in this situation, what are the facts? Because there has been confusion. Uh, 
a suggestion that maybe this virus is seasonal and then it's going to go away uh, in the summer. That is not a fact, it's an opinion. Some people believe it will go away in the summer. Some people believe it won't. But we don't have a definitive answer as to when the virus uh, naturally will abate. Uh, well, when will we have a vaccine? The president said we're going to have it shortly. Uh, CDC says it's about a year. Uh, the president met with uh, medical research companies, uh, pushed them to work as hard as they could to come up with a vaccine. The companies say they may develop a vaccine in a matter of weeks or a couple of months. But whatever they develop then has to be tested. And by the time it's tested is 12 months to 18 months, depending on how the tests uh, actually go. How does it spread? It spreads like the flu spreads. Uh, but this is a respiratory illness. So it spreads from a cough. It spreads from a sneeze. Theoretically, a six-foot radius uh, is the proximate radius that droplets of a sneeze or a cough could uh, travel. Or somebody sneezes on their hand, and then they put their hand on a surface, and then you touch the surface. The virus on a hard surface lives for about 24 hours. Uh, that's why we talk about uh, disinfecting uh, mass transit systems, uh, et cetera, and why that's important. Uh, should we shake hands and should we uh, hug? We just bumped elbows in, the, uh, in this meeting, which is a different kind of uh, feeling, frankly, and a different look. Uh, every flu season, Dr. Zucker recommends to me that I tell people they shouldn't shake hands and they shouldn't hug. I have never followed his advice personally nor professionally, and I have never said to the public, oh, it's flu season, you should not shake hands and you should not hug. I have two issues with that. Uh, number one, I'm in elected office. I shake hands for a living. That's what I do. Uh, number two, I'm from Italian American heritage. I'm a hugger. I'm a big hugger. Uh, so, if, as a matter of precaution, don't shake hands, don't hug, uh, it's good advice in a normal flu season, it's good advice now during the coronavirus situation. Uh, well, the number of people tested and found positive keeps going up, yes, it will, and it will continue to go up. I've said that from day one. Uh, when this is over, uh, we will have dozens and dozens and dozens of cases, okay? Now, the question that really matters is, so what? So what? What's the bottom line to all of this? The bottom line to all of this is 80% of the people who have the coronavirus will resolve themselves, 80% will get the virus, they'll feel some symptoms, and then they will self-resolve. About 20% will be seriously ill, possibly requiring hospitalization. Uh, and for some very small percentage, uh, it could be lethal. Uh, the people who have to be most concerned, senior citizens, people who have an underlying uh, immune-compromised situation uh, or an underlying illness. Those are the people who we have to mo work uh, hardest to protect. Uh, what am I worried about as governor? Nursing homes, senior congregate facilities. Uh, that is where we have to do our best work because that is a population that could be uh, subject to uh, a, a serious situation if the coronavirus was present there. What do I worry about personally? Uh, because we all have family members, and you know, in family members, you always have one member who's a little more uh, nervous than the others. My family, I have a brother uh, who is an extraordinarily anxious personality. 
uh, always has been, always will be. He's just anxious by nature. Uh, so he has a lot of questions. Uh, I have a mother who is elderly. Uh, she doesn't think of herself as elderly. And don't tell her I said she was elderly. I will deny it. Uh, but we have to be careful for my mother. I said, you know, you want to think about using hand sanitizer. You want to think about uh, where you're going and what you're doing, which would also be true during a flu season, right? It's just extrapolating from a, from a flu season. Uh, that's what this is all about. So let's keep the perspective. Let's understand what this is. Uh, we have data. We have experience. We're not dealing with uh, an unknown situation. This has gone through China. There's been thousands of people who have experienced this disease. So uh, we know what we're dealing with. Uh, and also remember where this is going to be most problematic globally will be for those countries that don't have a sophisticated health care system. Luckily, in this country, and certainly in this state, we have the most sophisticated health care system probably on the globe. Uh, so we're coordinated, we're on top of it, we're diligent, but we also have to keep it all in focus. With that, let me turn it over to uh, County Executive Laura Curran, and then you'll hear from County Executive Steve Ballone. Thank you. Governor, thank you very much, and thanks for being with us again on Long Island. We really appreciate it. And I also want to thank you for the reassuring tone. Um, our job today, and always is to reassure the public by giving the facts. Um, I really want to thank my um, Commissioner of Health, Dr. Larry Eisenstein, and his team who has been working 24-7 around the clock, weekends, holidays, since this has emerged, uh, monitoring the situation and just doing the hard work. So as you've heard from the governor, we do have our first positive case in Nassau County. It's a man in his early 40s who tested positive at Wadsworth. Um, he is in hospital isolation now. Uh, when we got the positive result this morning, we immediately took the next step, and that is the Department of Health launched a contact investigation. So what does that mean? A contact investigation is where the patient is interviewed, and there is an analysis done. We have contact investigators who go out, a team who go out and look at the man's routine at possible contacts, and if anyone is deemed at risk, the Department of Health will contact this person. Um, this patient's close contacts have already been advised to isolate themselves. Um, this team of contact investigators is very experienced. They do this every day with various diseases. Of course, with this situation that we're experiencing now with the coronavirus, they are scaling up. I also want to let our residents know that we have a volunteer corps of a thousand volunteers, medical professionals, doctors, nurses, etc., who drill for this sort of thing year round. And I also don't have to tell you we have the best hospitals here on Long Island and the best hospital networks, and we're very lucky to have that. Um, we are setting up a county call center, so we'll get you the number to the press as soon as we have the number set up. In the meantime, there's a state hotline, which is, uh, everyone knows it, but I'll repeat it again, 888-364-3065. That has been up and running. I'm very happy to hear the news about local testing. It is imperative that we have local testing so we can do more tests and get quicker results, and I think that is also a good way to reassure the public. Uh, the goal now is to avoid community spread. That's why we do the contact investigation. And I just want to uh, affirm and, and repeat that there is no need to panic. If you live on Long Island, you can go about your daily routine, your normal behavior. But please, take care of yourself. Wash your hands. Do the elbow bump. That's what we do when we met each other. Usually when I meet the governor, we have a little kiss on the cheek, a little handshake. But now we're doing this everywhere we go. Uh, so keep doing that. Um, I am also heartened by the emergency powers that the governor has, uh, has now that we can get the help and the resources that we need to the county. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive. County Executive Stephen Ballone. Thank you, Governor. It's uh, good to be here. Usually when we're gathered at the uh, Long Island Welcome Center, there's a massive blizzard outside that, that's occurring. I'm not sure this is better. Um, <laughs> But uh, I want to thank the governor uh, for his leadership uh, on this issue um, once again. Uh, and, of course, um, as County Executive Curran said, 
uh, his calming tone and, and reassurances to the public because I think that is the most important thing we need to do here. Uh, I can tell you that we have been in close coordination uh, with the state, with the state health department. I want to thank Dr. Zucker uh, and his team uh, from the very beginning uh, here. Uh, our health commissioner, Dr. Piggott, and his team are doing an outstanding uh, job. Uh, we are currently monitoring a um, uh, number of individuals, about 15. Um, there are three under investigation for uh, being tested, uh, essentially. Uh, right now, we do, have, we do not have a confirmed case in, in Suffolk County um, at this point. Uh, but obviously, uh, we understand, uh, as the governor mentioned, the testing is happening uh, that is likely to happen at, at some point. What we want the public to know is, obviously, we are, we are ready. We have been uh, working on this from the very beginning. There are a number of things we're, we're doing. Uh, yesterday, we, uh, for example, we briefed uh, all of the superintendents, uh, our health department and our emergency management team uh, briefed uh, all of our school districts yesterday. Today, we conducted a tabletop exercise for all of our emergency management uh, team, uh, health team, uh, in coordination with the state. Uh, tomorrow we'll be briefing uh, East End uh, fire chiefs and departments, uh, conducting a briefing for the county legislature as well. Uh, and so these are the things that uh, types of things that we have been doing. We'll continue to do. I want to thank uh, all of our uh, health uh, leaders here that are convened uh, for the great work that they do each and every day. Uh, but we're seeing uh, the excellence that we have in this region in terms of our health care system uh, really shine uh, in a crisis like this. Uh, so I want to thank them as well. And, and finally, thank the governor again for really stepping forward and, and um, you know, as he has done in many situations, providing resources uh, that are necessary uh, as we are on the uh, front lines here in, in the counties, uh, partnering with us and working with us to uh, provide some of those resources that we need. So thank you very much, Governor. Resources is a nice word for money. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, thank you to all of our colleagues, uh, and thank you to the county executives, not just for, for uh, these comments, but for the partnership. And uh, we have an extraordinary partnership. And uh, Steve is right. We've been in this building many times dealing with emergencies, weather emergencies, uh, and the like, uh, and uh, we've We've handled them all uh, well. Uh, it's just getting through it and getting through it with a minimum amount of pain, and that's what we have to do here once again.